I want to, uh, I've got all kinds of questions for you about publicity and how to how to market. Uh, but before we get to any of it, I got to ask, have you, Megan Beatty, ever seen a flying saucer and do you believe in them? Gosh, you know, I remember as a kid hearing like this weird, like, whoa, 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 noise and wanting to believe. Like, I'm sure it was a helicopter or something, but wanting, I just remember that like desperately wanting to believe, like that's what it was. I never saw anything, and I think it would be so cool to see one. So cool, but no, never have. It's on my bucket list before uh, before I go. That's something I want to see. Yeah, totally. Oh, my my wife's always telling me, you know, when it, when it comes to life goals, you should do things you have control over. Well, I, I look up a lot. <laughs> so. Well, let's uh, let's talk about publicity. So, if uh, an author comes to you and they say, "Megan Beatty, world-renowned publicist, uh, publishing expert, um, make my book a superstar," what kind of services um, do you provide? How, how how do you go about running a book? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have many authors who will call and say, "I want to be a New York Times bestseller. What can you do to make me one?" And I say, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! Back up, back up, back up." Um, and there's, there's a lot of, I, I, part of my job, which is not in the job description so much is, is really author education is laying out the realities and tempering the expectations because, um, I think what I do has incredible value. Um, uh, you know, this is maybe going off on a little bit of a tangent, but uh, one, one of the biggest questions I get from authors is, what do you do that's different from an in-house publicist? So, because if you're, if you're going to have a book published by, say, Random House, you're going to be assigned a publicist who is to handle all the PR aspects of your book. So it is, it's a completely valid question. Why would I spend a lot of money because Book PR is not cheap. Why would I spend a lot of money on something that is going to be part of the book being published? At, you know where I would. Let's have to uh, start it. start there real quick, if yeah. we, if we could. Uh, yeah. If I'm an author coming to you and I'm trying to budget for your amazing services or a a, a different publicist, what uh, what sort of publicity budget should an author be setting aside up and above what their uh, publisher may have already put in? Sure. Yeah. It's. Um, I'll have authors who'll come and say, you know, I'm looking for publicity and I have $2,000. And I'll say, well, you, not me then. I mean, I, I'm sort of an all or nothing gal. I mean, I, it's hard for me to, to just do, like people will say, okay, I just want the New York Times and Entertainment Weekly, just those two things, how much? It just doesn't work like that. My, I have to cast a wide net to, like you have to go after two, 200 media outlets to get 10 things or 15 things or 20 things. So it's really hard to kind of have a very narrow scope. So that's all to say, I like to be, and I like to be very immersive. It's hard to kind of just do this and that with, with a book project. So I like to you know to do, I'm a good writer. So I like to write all the press materials. I like to brainstorm with my authors and figure out, you know, what, what, what's their, story beyond the book what because that's really what that's really the, the essence of publicity it's not just hey this is a good book and you should review it because a lot of people are just the review possibilities are very limited people are you know just people for example people magazine used to have like you know four or five pages of book reviews now they have one page and there's barely, you know, five books on it. So the, the opportunities for book reviews are very limited. So what that means is you have to get creative. So it, so when I work with my authors, I try to pull out what their story is. So, um, so why did they write this book? There's usually some sort of true story that's factored into the, the novel they've written. So can they talk about that? Um, I um, Can they write about it? Is there an essay that we could place at a media outlet that would be a way to bring attention to the book? Um, are they an expert about something that even though they've written a novel about it, they're, they have an expertise that they could, they could talk about 
the, the nonfiction aspect of their story, because that's really, it, it, it's difficult, excuse me, to get, um, to, to get radio interviewers to talk to novelists, and then, unless there's something they can talk about beyond, this is what my book's about. So that's, that's kind of the key that I work with with my authors, is to figure out who they are and what their story is. Um, so can I you know, give us a, an example uh, of how you might go about that for a particular project? Sure, yeah. So, um, gosh, there's so many. Um, so I'm working on this fantastic um, crime um, police procedural called One Small Sacrifice by Hillary Davidson. It's coming out June 1st. And um, there's an aspect in the book about PTSD. One of the, the main characters is suffering from PTSD, and it's lost a lot of his memories. And so that factors into the crime because who did he do it? He can't remember. There, there's all this, you know, um, murkiness because of a past trauma from that he suffered from. So, um, so Hillary, um, Hillary Davidson, she had actually had a real life experience where in one of her first jobs out of college, she was working in an office and, um, it was a, to do with uh, with veterans and a disgruntled veteran came in and um, and set the office on fire and you know terrifying everyone was okay she was escaped but she recalled that 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 experience really um, gave her you know her own experience with PTSD so no doubt yeah so she um, that really was a big inspiration for this character. So, um, so what I had Hillary do is, is she, um, she wrote a first person essay about it and it's something that I'm using in my, um, in my pitching, like her book is great. She has great, um, advanced blurbs about this book, but she also has something she can talk about that is very relevant to a lot of people. And I think, you know, readers, you, you look off, you often turn to books for an experience that, you know, either relates to your own or, you know, makes you feel like you're not alone. And so that's, I hope that there will be um, readers who read this book and feel like they're not alone um, in reading this character and, and seeing his experience. So, yeah. So that so way, if I'm a radio guy or a TV guy uh, and I want to interview the author and I say, okay, well, now we'll spend, you know, three minutes talking about the book, but now I've got another five minutes of content. We can talk about the story of the veteran coming out. That that is that the idea? Exactly. Exactly. And that's something that's going to have more, in my experience, it's going to have more appeal than just, oh, this is a best-selling author who's, who wants to talk about her new book. Well, then I should tell esteemed audience, I was once attacked by giant robot bees. It was terrifying. There you go. <laughs> More details coming in my memoir. <laughs>